So this story was told to me by an African-American folklorist. And when he told it to me, he gave me this disclaimer. Just because there's magic in this story doesn't mean that magic actually exists. However, <laughs> once there was a do-all axe, and it sure was magical. So a long, long time ago, in Sicily, there was a girl named Persephone. And Persephone was a mortal girl, but her mother was Demeter, who was the goddess of corn and grain and the harvest and life, really. And Persephone's most favorite thing in all the world was flowers. And so every day, she would walk through the fields of Sicily, picking flowers to bring home for her mother. And one day, she was walking through the field like she always had, and she saw the most beautiful flower that she had never seen before. So here comes our story. The story happens in the Eastern Jin Dynasty, which is around 1,000 years ago. At that time in China, women were not allowed to go to school or to attend courses. So is our Zhu. And Zhu tried very hard and then finally persuaded her parents to go to school, to send her to school, and was finally able to attend the courses in disguise as a man. And uh, on her way to the school from her hometown, she met Liang, and they became best friends. During their studying at the same school, no one, not a single one, discovers her true identity. So once upon a time in Ireland, there lived a king, and he was a handsome king, though it wasn't without trying. Actually, the king was very self-conscious about his appearance, and he put a lot of thought into the way he looked. His beard was always neatly groomed, his nails were always clean and evenly trimmed. His royal cloak was sewn in 20 different colors. And his unusual crown, which had little flaps that covered his ears, was studded with rare jewels from a distant land. Yes, he was a sight to behold. When I start to talk about an idiot named Ivan. <laughs> now, Ivan has two older brothers, and he lives in Russia in a very wealthy merchant family. And when his two older brothers came of age, they went to their father and they said, Father, give us a ship, a crew, and something to sell, and we will go sail the ocean and make you proud. And the father thought about it and he said, Yeah, that sounds about right. So the next day, the two older brothers, they went sailing off, and Ivan was standing there and he was waving and he went, Oh. Father! Can I have a ship, a crew, and something to sell, and I'll go make you proud? And the father didn't think about it. He said, no, Ivan, you're an idiot. <laughs> what happens? But I'm the sort of person who likes asking why, and I found this origin story for the city of Helm, and I'm going to share that with you this evening. Shortly after creation, God realized there are going to be more people in the world, and these people are going to need souls. So God got together with the angels and started talking about what are some of the qualities in a soul that would be important to have out in the world. So as he was talking with the angels, God started mixing sort of batches of souls, if you will. He started this is a story about my Oma Maria. Maria was the kind of person who knew seven languages fluently and 14 more conversationally. And she once confessed to me, greatest shame, Russian not so good. I read Dostoevsky in French. <laughs> <laughs> she was the most intimidating woman to ever use the phrase, okay, doc, to, to end a phone call. And she, she would always wear her furs, regardless of where we were going for dinner, because pizza is most beloved food. <laughs> Once upon a time, and not your time or my time, but a time long ago when things were much simpler and magic was easier to find. Well, in that time, there lived a woodcutter. The woodcutter lived with his wife and his old mother and his old father in a small cottage at the edge of the forest. Now the woodcutter and his wife, they had been married for quite some time and they had a love that was true and a love that was deep. And more than anything in the world, the woodcutter and his wife, they longed for a child. Well, the days came and the years passed and never could the soft cries of a child 
or the pittering and pattering of footsteps on the stairs be heard in that cottage. So this is why I use an ergonomic keyboard, and it all started with the fourth year. Now, we didn't say senior, no, because we were new college. We didn't have grades, no. We had, we had evaluations, and I'm going to tell you that is harder, because a written evaluation of every single thing you did and didn't learn, that makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> And that's what we got for every class, for every assignment, a, a whole evaluation for the semester. So, uh, so I was at New College, and my fourth year, I was working on my thesis. We had a thesis that required a full defense, very much like a CAS thesis, kind of a miniature version of a PhD thesis. We had a committee. We had to defend it in front of that committee. We had to stand up and say what we'd done and why we'd done it. And I was working on my thesis, and I was living in this house that was just amazing. I was the first grandchild born in this country, and Grandma panicked. <laughs> After I was born, Mother said, never again, which uh, she kind of, I, if I remember correctly, she used that phrase a lot with me. And, um, <laughs> and my aunt never married, and my uncle was this free spirit. So she just thought, well, we're in a new country. We'll start a new tradition. We'll teach the kid. So I learned all the stories. I had to tell them back to her, and she would bring the old ladies of, that came over with her in the same time period to the house, and they'd have the coffee uh, clutches, is it? Yeah, coffee clutch. And they would, uh, at the end, I would have to tell a story to them, and then they would correct me. Each one would say, <laughs> no, 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 it's this way, no, no. And they would leave, and I, would I was told to politely just, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. And then when they would leave, Grandma would say, forget everything they said, do it my way. <laughs> 